Thomas and the Dinosaur by Christopher Archer and Ken Stott Read by the New Storyteller One afternoon, James, Percy and Thomas were waiting in their shed for the drivers to collect them. I wonder what we will be doing this afternoon, said James. I've had quite enough excitement for one day, said Percy. Thomas and James looked at him. Why? they asked. Because I saw a dragon today, he announced. James and Thomas gasped in disbelief. Dragons breathe fire and eat engines. Percy added knowledgeably. Thomas wasn't quite sure whether to believe Percy or not. However, the next day he just left the junction with Annie and Crabbebell when he saw an enormous animal standing beside the line. It wasn't like any animal he'd ever seen before. It was so tall that it towered above the trees and had a long curved neck. I wonder what that is, Thomas thought to himself. Then he remembered the conversation he'd had with Percy the day before. That must be Percy's dragon, he thought. He looked at the strange animal again. It wasn't breathing fire, as Percy described. After some consideration, Thomas decided that the dragon must be asleep. Annie and Carabao were chatting noisily as usual. <laughs> said Thomas in a loud whisper. You might wake the dragon. Dragon? What's a dragon? asked Annie and Carabao. Don't you mean wagon? I mean dragon, said Thomas, whispering firmly. They eat naughty cabbages, you know. Annie and Carabao were silent for the rest of the journey. At the top station, Thomas drew to a halt. He was met by the fat controller, who was standing on the platform. Oh, sir, piped up Thomas excitedly. You never guess what I've just seen in the field. No time for that now, Thomas, the fat controller interrupted. I have another job for you. There is an emergency, he said. Whatever could it be? wondered Thomas and his driver. Hurry now, there's no time to lose, continued the fat controller. I would like you to take a flat truck to the junction for a special train. But, sir, said Thomas earnestly, what about my passengers? I've already arranged for Daisy to take them, insisted the fat controller. Now be quick, Thomas, I'm depending on you. With that, Annie and Carabao were uncoupled and shunted into a siding, whilst Thomas and his driver went immediately to collect the flat truck. When they reached the junction, Thomas's driver called out to a signalman who was waiting for them. Where are we to go with this flat truck? he asked. The signalman shouted his reply and pointed. But that's where the dragon is, said Thomas anxiously, and he might not be asleep this time. How the signalman chuckled when he heard this. Don't worry, Thomas, he said. It won't eat you. <laughs> it's not really a dragon. It's only a model dinosaur. It looks real, but it's just made of wood and plaster. 
Thomas felt a little reassured by this, and a dozen breathed fire and smoke. <laughs> the signalman continued laughing, only engines do that. <laughs> Thomas chugged along happily through the countryside. What's a dinosaur? he asked. He'd never heard of a dinosaur before. He wondered if it might be an animal he would find in a zoo, or perhaps in a faraway country. It's a prehistoric animal which lived millions of years ago, explained his driver. They don't exist any longer, he continued, except in museums. Oh, that's all right then, said Thomas. Percy said it was a fire-breathing dragon which at engines. He told me and James about it the other day in the engine shed when we were waiting to be taken out. I wasn't sure whether to believe him or not. Thomas continued, but he seemed so sure of himself. I'll have to find a way to pay him back. His driver laughed. <laughs> well, you don't need to worry about it now, Thomas. That dinosaur is an exhibit for a new show near the top station, he said. The lobby carrying it broke down, so we've got to take it instead. How exciting! said Thomas, starting to understand at last. So that's why we needed the flat truck. When they reached the dinosaur place, three workmen were busy. Look at those men, called Thomas. The workmen had climbed carefully onto the dinosaur's huge humpy back and were fixing strong chains on the model. When they'd secured the chains tightly, Two men climbed down from the dinosaur, leaving the foreman balanced on the dinosaur's back. He looked up and made a hand signal to something in the sky. At that moment, Thomas heard a whirring sound. He looked up to see that Harold, the helicopter, had come to help too. Hello, Harold, he peeped. Have you come to help me with the dragon? Uh, I mean, dinosaur? Yes, I have, Thomas, laughed Howard. Actually, it's a shame that it isn't a dragon, he continued, <laughs> because then it would be able to fly away by itself. <laughs> Thomas did not appreciate the joke. As Howard hovered carefully above the dinosaur, he lowered a hook down to the workman below. The workman caught the hook and then fastened it to the chains round the dinosaur. Then, at a signal, Harold lifted the model very slowly and very carefully. Up and up it hovered, slowly rising from the ground. The dinosaur looked as if it was floating. Oh, Harold, chuckled Thomas. <laughs> you do look funny. Just you wait until you have to pull the dinosaur back to the station, Howard replied. Then you look even funnier. <laughs> Harold carried the dinosaur over the hedge and towards Thomas's waiting truck. Then, very gently, he lowered it down onto the flat bed of the truck. There was a jolt as it came to land safely. Then the workman made sure it would not slip during the journey by tying it with strong chains. Peep, peep, whistled Thomas brightly. The Dinosaur Express is ready to row. When everything was secure, Thomas set off. He was surprised to find that the dinosaur was very light, so he had an easy run. Children who were playing nearby ran to wave as he passed by with his unusual load. Thomas felt rather proud as he chugged along. 
I'll be the only engine in the shed to have carried a dinosaur, he thought. That should keep old Gordon quiet for a day or two. It was certainly one of the strangest loads he'd ever been asked to carry. And it was causing quite a stir. On their route, at the middle station, they met Percy coming in the opposite direction. Time to pay Percy back, thought Thomas to himself. Poor Percy did look frightened when he saw what Thomas was carrying on his truck. Thomas! he called out in a trembly voice. There is a dr dr dragon on your b b b b b b back! Watch out! Thomas laughed. Don't worry, little Percy, he boasted. Your dragon won't eat me. I've tamed him and trained him not to eat blue engines. He still eats green ones, though, he added mischievously. Ugh, replied Percy. Don't see many of those round here. And he scuttled off, terrified to tell Henry and Duck. Thomas turned the corner towards the top station to see a big crowd waiting for him. Everyone started to cheer and wave when they saw Thomas and his unusual cargo. The fat control was there too, and the cane from the breakdown train was standing close by. Thomas did feel special. What a reception, he thought proudly. I shall have to carry prehistoric passengers more often. Thomas pulled up next to the breakdown train. He could guess what might happen next. One, two, three, lift, ordered the fat controller. Carefully, the breakdown crane lifted the model dinosaur from Thomas's flat truck and over the fence into the nearby gardens. The huge model animal came to rest with a thump. Soon the model was transported safely to the exhibition site. It took its place with the other dinosaurs in a wonderful prehistoric scene. Thanks to Thomas and Harold, the star traction was in place just in time. Now everything was ready for the grand opening. Thomas could hardly believe his eyes when he went past that day. He'd never seen such an extraordinarily collection of strange beasts. There was a fearsome pterodactyl, a tough-looking triceratops, and a positively terrifying Tyrannosaurus rex. Somehow, Thomas, laughed his fireman. <laughs> I don't think Percy will be coming to visit. After such an exciting day, it was time to leave the show and go back to the shed. It's a funny thing, said Thomas, puzzled. I know my dinosaur's just a model, but I could have sworn he was giving me a funny look. I think you're right, said his driver. He gave the fireman a nudge. It must be because he's a do you think he saw this? And Thomas and his driver and fireman laughed all the way home. The end.